Welcome back to story mode. Arcade machines are said to be the pinnacle of gaming. To me, they're the best. They're raw and they remind me of my childhood arcade flashback. Welcome to 2006, where two of my favourite movies came out, and that is one, Superman Returns. Yes, it did divide audiences. Some people liked him, some people didn't. I actually thought Brandon Routh did a pretty good job, but no one will beat Christopher Reeve. As much as I love Superman Returns, I don't think anything's going to take the place of James Bond in Casino Royale. I'm sorry. That last hand. You killed me. This was Daniel Craig's first outing as James Bond, and I have to say, he was incredible. I'll also say that Casino Royale has to be my favourite Daniel Craig movie of all time. The movie had everything. Humour, cinematography, a great story, and action. <laughs> So what else was going on in the world? Well, Nintendo launched their new console after the GameCube, the Nintendo Wii. What an unusual name. Sony releases the much anticipated PlayStation 3. Google buys YouTube for $1.6 billion. Pluto's downgraded from a planet to a dwarf planet. And finally, Australia reeled with shock as it lost its two icons in the same week in September. Conservationist and self-proclaimed wildlife warrior, Steve Irwin, and motor racing legend, king of the mountain, Peter Brock. Getting behind the wheel of a car and make it do something it fundamentally doesn't want to do. You know, you're trying to break late into a corner and you slide it through and you're doing all those sorts of things. That's a fantastic thing for any person to do it. Peter Brock was an absolute legend of Australian racing. And although he didn't have international success, this guy did. Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. What good is a fast car, a flash house and a gold plate of dunny to me? Absolutely no good at all. I've been put on this planet to protect wildlife and wilderness areas, which in essence is going to help humanity. I want to have the purest oceans. I want to be able to drink water straight out of that creek. I want to stop the ozone layer. I want to save the world. So it's 2006 and having no job again and having a hobby like video game collecting, it's no good mix. Especially if I want to buy back my collection I once sold 10 years ago. So while looking for work, I decided to start playing more arcade machines one day. I went into the room, turned on the PowerPoint for Afterburner and the machine didn't work. There was no power. In fact, the machine didn't move, which it usually goes through a process that moves forward, back, and then left and right, and there was nothing. So I turned it off. I decided to turn on Power Drift. The screen came up, but it was all graphic glitches. What's going on? So I turned that off and went to Space Harrier. The screen was warming up, but there was nothing. It was just this white cloud. It was like someone was playing a practical joke. So I got out my multimeter, tested the power points, yep. 240 volts, pretty much exactly. That's the power they should run on. That's Australian power. Now, I know I haven't played the machines for at least four months, but something just wasn't right. So I got out my arcade PCBs and tried them in the red machine. Street Fighter 2 worked. In fact, it worked perfectly. Then I tried other boards, R-Type. It was not working. And then another one, not working again. What is going on here? Then I sat down and started fixing Afterburner. I knew I had to do one machine at a time, otherwise I'd be so overwhelmed with all these machines and PCBs, it would not be good for me. So I pulled the front off Afterburner and started looking at what was the problem with the PCBs. Well, first of all, the motor driver board. All the capacitors looked like they were leaking and they were old, obviously, and they just probably had enough of overworking. The problem was the main PCB was also faulty. It took ages to find a replacement PCB. When I fixed that, 
I played the game and within half an hour, the monitor went. Yep, after all that, the monitor just decided to die. After the monitor got repaired, Afterburner was in full swing once again. But that was three days of intense labor and quite a bit of money. Next was Space Harrier. That was a mess. It had burnt chips, burnt power supply, the soundboard had gone. I had to actually call in another tech to help me nut it out because I was just so overwhelmed with all the faults that were happening around me. Why was this happening? Was there moisture in the room? Was there some electrical interference? I didn't know. After I got Space Harrier working again, I got moving on to the other machines and eventually fixed them all. Until one day a friend came over with his cousin and they wanted to play Afterburner. I turned it on, what happened? Graphic glitches, again. I couldn't take it anymore. I'm absolutely sick of these arcades. They're killing me with money and time and I'm fixing them more than playing with them. In fact, I wanted all my arcade machines gone, all of them. I'm an all or nothing guy, so I didn't just want a few of them or the ones that happened to work. I just wanted to start fresh and sell them all. I did know a lot about machines working at Flash Amusements in 1994, but this was a luxury I could not afford. Fixing them was becoming quite expensive and I didn't have the contacts to buy the right electronics for the right price. So I listed them for sale and started selling them off one by one. Most of the big ones went to Queensland, except Afterburner, that went to Sydney. It was a very, very sad day, but I just couldn't take it anymore. To have them off my back would relieve me from stress, and it's a stress I just didn't need. I kept most of my arcade PCBs. I had majority of the Capcom arcade boards at the time, and there's no way I'm ever selling them, especially when Capcom's my favorite company. But the others had to go. I would never buy those big arcades ever again. Besides, Sony are about to release their PlayStation 3, a console I was dying to get. And my friend the Capcom Japan said he'd get me a PlayStation 3, not a development one, but some testing one, three days before the Japanese release to my door. I just couldn't wait. Now I have to be honest, I wasn't excited about the PS3 as I was the PS2. And because the Xbox 360 was so good, another console coming on the market, I would have to then split between games and collect for both systems. It was just crazy, so I eagerly waited. It came just as he said, three days before release date. In fact, I got it on the 8th of November, 2006. Kutaragi was at a central Tokyo electronics store to hand over the first console, which went to a man from China who didn't give his name. Kutaragi said he was pleased at the turnout, which numbered around a thousand people at the store. Queuing was allowed from around 4 a.m., but people had been waiting nearby since the night before. Alongside the customers, media from around the world came to get a first glimpse of the PlayStation 3 on sale. It will hit stores in North America, Hong Kong and Taiwan on Friday, but won't be available in Europe and Australia until March next year. Because I had it so early, a few friends and I decided to go to the video game exhibition that happened to be on that weekend in Melbourne. I decided to take the PlayStation 3 and see what happens, and boy, did I get attention, even from the Xbox 360 girl. I went up to the Sony booth and showed them I had a PS3 and asked them if they wanted to put it on their big screen. They just said no, and I said, well, have you got one? They said, no, not yet but they wouldn't be authorized to put the Japanese version up there. They're crazy. They could have showed people what's about to come to Australia. Of course, Australia got it at a much later date. The PS3 was an awesome console and the main games I was playing at that time was Virtual Fighter 5. I think I went through the whole game in like a month. It's a really, really long game, almost like an adventure type game, but with fighting. And well, what about the arcade machines? Well, good riddance. 